Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Hope you have enjoyed your life. Today, we've got some pretty great news to talk about, something that's really exciting. But you know what's more exciting than news? Sponsor spots. So I want you to go ahead and check out Displates at displate.com forward slash UFD Tech Official. Dope, amazing metal prints that are great. They mount on your walls with magnets. You just smack them on there. That's how magnets sound when they collide together. You can get them in amazing different flavors and textures and prints and they're all great. Use coupon code UFD to save 15% and up your, your game in your decor, okay? You, you, you live in a dorm room, get one of these, okay? You live with your family, my wife totally will let me have one of these as long as it's like one of the location ones like Pretoria. Disc plates are amazing no matter what you're trying to do. Anyways, you know what else is amazing? We just got some unveiled information from one of the Gears of War 5 devs. Gears 5 is what it's called. Anyways, the developer on that was talking about the next generation of consoles and let slip something that nobody has actually come out and said just yet, which is that the next generation console will have dedicated ray tracing cores. The specific quote goes, we don't have anything to announce right now in terms of gears with the new hardware, but I'm definitely super excited about what the new hardware could do having dedicated ray tracing cores is huge this is also a huge leak almost because everybody has been talking about ray tracing on next generation consoles even polyphony digital has shown off some ray tracing demos with their gran turismo uh, showcase so we've seen that game developers are expecting to implement ray tracing on the next generation of consoles but never necessarily that they were going to have the dedicated hardware for it like nvidia does on their rtx series of graphics cards but now having dedicated ray tracing cores on amd's APU is quite intriguing. Where's AMD gonna put those? How is this gonna work? We know we're getting a Zen 2 CPU and a Navi GPU. I guess that Navi GPU has ray tracing cores or is it a plugin that has ray tracing cores like an add-on chip that they're putting on the PCB? Not something that's clear at this point, but what is clear is ray tracing is coming to next generation of consoles. NVIDIA, as always, ahead of the pack, leading the forefront. They can say that AMD is following in their footsteps, which obviously isn't true because there's been ray tracing even since the PlayStation 3 days. There's a fully real-time ray trace demo on the PS3, so it's not the first time that this has happened, but NVIDIA paved the way for game developers to, to care about it, but Gears 5 didn't have ray tracing even though they could have because they're an AMD sponsored game and that's why they have to wait for the AMD ray tracing. That's all conspiracy stuff. The real facts are ray tracing coming to the console near you my friends. You want ray trace Minecraft? Wait for Xbox Scarlet. Probably PS5 as well. And then let's go ahead and shift to the desktop side of AMD which is in regards to their next BIOS update for the Ryzen 3000 CPUs. In case you don't remember there's a whole controversy going around because a lot of the Ryzen 3000 chips don't hit their advertised boost clock speeds. Even though the performance is what AMD claimed the actual specific clock speeds aren't where people are expecting them. So AMD said that this is probably a BIOS issue and that they're gonna be rolling out a new one. And they've also detailed what that specifically is going to be. And in case you don't remember in the last Hot News episode we did, we, Tom's Hardware actually got their hands on a beta version of this BIOS and it worked in some cases and didn't work in others, but it was beta and not necessarily what AMD's rolling out full force, but the updates are coming. And then there's also another update that AMD will be releasing work workstation versions of Navi. This is not something that's necessarily a huge deal. It's something that's kind of expected, but over on the Foronix website, they discovered some Linux uh, drivers that indicated that there will indeed be Navi level workstation cards coming out sometime soon. And what's been out for a while is this Threadripper 1920X, 12 cores, 24 threads. It's one of the first iterations of getting above eight cores in, on AMD side. And it's going on sale right now on Amazon for $200. If you want a 12 core and not Ryzen 3000 with its increased IPC, which costs $500, which is, I mean, 
over 100% increase over this. $200 for the Threadripper 1920X. Obviously the more expensive part is the motherboards, but in case you wanna pick one up, Amazon link, affiliate link in the video description for you. And that was a while of covering AMD. Now let's go ahead and switch on over to Intel who has another vulnerability found into their CPUs, a Netcat vulnerability in their Xeon processors to be able to steal data through intercepting some SSH securities. So it's a complicated thing as with all of Intel's vulnerabilities vulnerabilities. It has to do with a lot of specific technical terms, but the, the real problem is this only affects Intel. Again, Intel has designed their CPUs to not really be secure, but rather to get all of the performance out of them that they can because that's just how they did it. So uh, no telling just yet whether or not any patches in a microcode update will actually slow these chips down, but just not a good look for Intel to continuously, at least once a month, have another vulnerability come out about only their chips. Yikes. And speaking of yikes, in case you're going to the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, as somebody who's supposed to be there, like an athlete or whatever, get ready to be facially recognized courtesy of Intel because they're going to be using facial recognition as a security measure to make sure certain people are going where they want. This is not going to replace typical security measures such as an ID badge with name and face on it, uh, but it's going to be used in place of, let's say somebody lost their thing, the facial recognition would stop them from going into un prior, un un restricted areas. Why couldn't I not think of that word? And you know it's not restricted anymore, RAM to the six gigahertz barrier, because for the first time ever, DDR4 RAM has gone beyond six gigahertz, courtesy of G-Skills Trident Z Royals, as well as the Taiwanese overclocker top PC, hitting 6,000 megahertz on RAM. That is crazy. It's crazy. I'm satisfied with 3,000. He doubled it. He doubled my satisfaction. And then let's switch on over to some more console stuff, I don't know, Google Stadia. Anyways, apparently one of the weird things with the Google Stadia launch was that the Wasabi green controller was not going to be launched in all of the countries, but then Google caved and now the Wasabi controller will be available in all 14 countries that Stadia is rolling out to. So in case you wanted the Wasabi controller, now's your chance. And also now's your chance to run away from the Silent Arrow glider delivery drone. It's a huge freaking drone that looks like it's made out of cardboard box, but it can carry up to 1600 pounds of payload or right around 800 kilograms if I'm quickly converting in my head. It's meant to be used for warfare and carrying supplies to the battlefield. That way it's an autonomous drone that can actually carry uh, food supplies, ammunition, all of that kind of stuff, um, and make sure that nobody who's doing the delivery will then have to be in harm's way. And then have you ever wanted shoes? that aren't the same color all the time. Well, MIT researchers have come out with a special ink that can change colors when exposed to different types of light, thereby giving a chameleon effect to whatever you put the ink on. Obviously, shoes is one of the various areas. Uh, and then there's a video that's in this article showing off how it could be potentially used for uh, cell phone cases. And so you don't have to necessarily stick with a single color, but everything could be fluctuating all the time like a beautiful s silent rainbow, as opposed to those loud, annoying rainbows. I'll tell you what. Speaking of annoying, Honda, a, revealed its freaking ugliest electric car that I've ever seen, starting at 26,000 pounds, not gonna be available in the United States. And I can see why, because this thing is hideous. Honda, this ain't it, fam. And then speaking of driving, there's been some progress going on with Uber and Lyft independent contractors pushing towards becoming employees of Uber and Lyft, especially in California, with a bill passing the state Senate in California now just having to go to the governor's desk to potentially change the environment there. One of the most ridiculous arguments that I heard put forth by Uber was that drivers are not the core of the Uber business, thereby this is not necessarily something that should happen. Yeah, they said drivers are not the core of their business, which, to be fair, is true because obviously the ultimate goal for these uh, companies, Uber and Lyft, is to have autonomous fleets so that they take all of the money and they don't have to share it with any of the drivers. The ride sharing thing right now is just a step to autonomous driving. So while it's completely true, like they actually don't need the drivers for their ultimate business plan, 
If they lost the drivers now, however, they might be a little screwed over as far as like being able to afford to pay for researching all the autonomous driving stuff. Okay, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about Apple's announcement. Obviously that has come and went. You've already probably seen dozens of videos covering the iPhone 11 as well as other announcements that went down at Apple's announcement stuff. So I'm just gonna keep it brief, but the biggest thing that happened that wasn't Apple specifically, but is around and confuses the crap out of me is Razer announced that they are getting into the cell phone cover game, specifically making cell phone covers for the new iPhones. So in case you want to keep them cool, which is what they're claiming with the thermoprene material that they're using on their covers, it should draw heat away from the phone so that you can get better performance. And I, I guess, why? Why Razer? Okay, and then let's go ahead and give the lowdown on all of the Apple stuff that happened. You got three new phones that were announced, the iPhone 11, iPhone 11 Pro, and iPhone 11 Pro Max all having various screen size, 6.1, 5.8, and 6.5 inches respectively. The iPhone 11 starting at $700, iPhone 11 Pro starting at 1,000, and the Pro Max starting at 1,100. And they're gonna come in a variety of colors, specifically the iPhone 11. Then they also announced an 18 watt fast charger, which will not be included in the iPhone 11 box, but will instead be a separate purchase for the $700. I mean. That's a budget phone, okay? $700 is budget. We're not gonna include accessories for you, friends. No. And then on top of that, there were announcements for Apple Arcade, the uh, unlimited game streaming service that Apple's announcing. It's gonna be $5 a month. September 19th is the launch date. There was a few new shows shown off for Apple TV Plus, starting at $5 a month on November 1st. Then, actually probably the best announcement is the 10 inch, 10.2 inch iPad that they came out with, starting at $330. It's a half an inch increase in screen size. It's basically the same under the hood, but you get more screen real estate and it's cheaper, $330, love it. Then Apple announced a watch. No, like a legit watch, a, lot, a watch that you can always look at because it has an always on display, which is what watches have had forever. So cool. Anyways, the Apple Watch Series 5 does have a few key improvements, uh, better battery life, automatic international emergency calling, built-in compass, compass in case you get lost, as well as the return of ceramic to it, starting at $400, launching on September 20th. And I will mention, I did say the iPhone 11 does not come with the 18 watt charger. Just to be specific, the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max do come with them. So it's just the iPhone 11 that got left out. And then obviously they talked about their new A13 Bionic chip, which is Apple's chip with CPU and GPU combined onto the SOC and is actually quite good because it's gonna be one of the first implementations of TSMC's seven nanometer EUV lithography. The A12, of course, was the first one on TSMC's seven nanometers when it launched last year. So it's giving better battery life, slightly better performance, about 20% faster, but 40% less power on the seven nanometer EUV process. Even if they're not getting a node shrink, they are getting actual more performance out of the A13. and that comes to the uh, uh, the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max having up to four or five hours more than the previous generation 10S and 10S Max, which is quite crazy. The iPhone 11 only has an hour more than the 10R, but the 10R was already the best battery life out of Apple's entire lineup. So there's a lot of good stuff that was announced yesterday. Uh, then they also did introduce a new $30 Apple Care Plus option for AirPods, as well as some Beats headphones so that you can have Apple Care for those devices if you want it, which could potentially just be a scam. Is that a dog? And then another thing that's slightly iPhone related, but was really cool and I wanted to announce it was Roland's multi-camera app for the iPhone, which will allow you to sync up to four phones so that you can get multi-angle recording just on a phone. It's quite incredible. It actually might be really good for like wedding film, filmography, filmography, videography, or just anything that's kind of uh, lower budget, uh, more run and gun type style. You can actually sync up phones to make sure that you're all recording the same stuff. And I'm gonna stop recording hot news there. Don't forget to check out displays at the link in the video description if you're interested, as well as that $200 Threadripper 1920X if you care at all. Also hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode of Hot News. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all, all of our tech related content. I'm Brett with UFD Tech. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. But 
I can't wait until it's used to deliver, what is it, 1,800 pounds? Your mom. <laughs> that was terrible, I'm sorry. Your mother is a nice lady, Reese. <laughs>